I gotta be honest, I completely forgot about Tate Martell, and I low-key forgot he even existed. The last time I heard anything about this guy was months ago, and that's when it was announced that he's retiring from football. We all know what happened with Mr. Martell. He was an outstanding high school quarterback, five-star recruit, top quarterback in the country, he was supposed to be really good in college. Long story short, he winds up transferring three or four times, and he never plays. He went to Ohio State, didn't work out. Went to Miami, didn't work out. And he went to UNLV, that was almost the last resort, and he still couldn't play there. We've already talked about that before on this channel, and I'm sure most of you know this. We're here to talk about an update on him. Mr. Martelli, the man, the myth, the legend himself, He's back. Well, I guess I kind of worded that wrong. He's not really back, but you'll see what I'm talking about. And let's just say that I believe he's reached an all-time low. We're going to talk all about that. We also got two other topics to talk about in today's video, one of those being Ohio State and the other one being Brian Kelly at LSU. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about and go over. Real quick, before we get into it, we're on the road to 200K, so if you do want to help us out, achieve our dreams, I'd appreciate it. Whenever we gain new subscribers, it means a lot to me. If you don't want to subscribe, that's cool too. And now without further ado, let's get into it. Trust me, I want to get into the juicy stuff just as much as you guys, but I got to bring this up first because it's been on my mind nonstop. And that is no other than Brian Kelly, aka the new head coach for LSU. There's no arguments about it. Everybody can agree. Brian Kelly, he's a good coach, but he hasn't reached great or elite. One thing that has held him back in his career is he hasn't won a championship, and until he does, I don't think he's going to get that respect. Recently in an interview, Brian Kelly stated one of the main reasons he even took the LSU job is because he wants to be Nick Saban. That right there is flat out awesome because I don't know many head coaches who actually want to go and play Nick Saban. I could be wrong. Maybe there's coaches that do want to play Alabama and Nick Saban, but I haven't heard him say it like Brian Kelly. Here's what he also had to say about Alabama and Nick Saban. I want to beat Nick Saban. Who doesn't want to beat Nick Saban? You know what I mean? I want to play him in the regular season. That's the standard. Now he's a conference opponent. I like it, and I love the competitiveness, and I think LSU fans, you're going to be happy with Kelly. That's all for that, and now without further ado, let's move on to the main encore, the main topic of today's video, Tate Martell. He's been flying under the radar, and rightfully so, because there's no need to keep up with him anymore. He doesn't play college football or football at all. He's retired. I myself never kept up with him too much, even dating back to high school, but for some reason, everybody loved him, and I think that's because he was on the Netflix show. He had a very large following and a very large fan base. Going into Ohio State, there was a ton of hype and expectations. Sadly, though, all of those hype and expectations, that's all it will ever be, hype and expectations. Nothing happened on the field. He quickly went from a top high school quarterback to a guy three to four years later, he's a college football meme. Nowadays, if you see someone transfer two or three times, they bring up Tay Martell. It is what it is. If you have a big fan base like that and you flop at the college level, people are going to joke on you. Recently, though, on Instagram, he posted a video clip where at the beginning, somebody was trying to joke on him for hurdling some opponents, but then later, he shows his highlights where he goes off against them, and he said, this is social media compared to reality. To dumb it down even more, he's saying, okay, on social media, they made fun of me for trying to hurdle that guy and he body slammed me, but in reality, I went out there and I killed him in high school. I didn't watch the game. I don't remember it, but apparently they blew him out by 30 points and he played awesome. Once again, though, key phrase in that statement, it was a high school football game. That game in high school happened nearly six to seven years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is one of the saddest things you'll ever see in your life, or at least in my humbled opinion. This is a 24-year-old grown man posting his high school football highlights trying to relive his glory days. He can't accept the fact and come to the terms with he's no longer in high school and nobody cares about him anymore. I don't mean this in a disrespectful way or manner, it's just the facts and he needs a reality check. The worst type of people in life and the saddest people in life, and I can't help but laugh at them, are those who peaked in high school. I'm sure about 95% of you watching this, you know somebody that peaked in high school. And I'm not just talking about football players or athletes, I'm talking about girls, popular people, anybody like that. It's really girls too because there would be a decent looking female Email. She has a little bit of popularity in the city, but once she graduates, she realizes nobody outside that city cares about her. It's always these people who grow up in these small towns and cities where, yeah, they may be popular there, but compared to everywhere else, you're a nobody. And guess what? Those said people wind up never leaving their city because they can't stand the fact knowing.
knowing if they do leave, they're going to be a nobody. So what happens? They wind up staying there, being a high school teacher, and still trying to live their dreams through their kids. I see it happen all the time, and I'm getting those exact same vibes from Tate Martell. May I remind you once again, this is a 24-year-old grown man posting high school football highlights. Is that not embarrassing? I played basketball in high school. I was starting on varsity ever since ninth grade. I was always the best player on the team. I won a bunch of awards, and I wound up having some offers coming out of high school. I was a good player. I had a couple of offers, and I could have played college basketball. To make a long story short, though, I had injury problems, and I was being realistic. I knew basketball, playing it at least, it wasn't for me. With me battling the injury problems and also around that same time debating on starting a YouTube channel and just not playing basketball at all, as you can tell, and if you're watching this video, you know now, I started doing the YouTube and it's worked out so far. I brought that up to say this. I'm going to assume many of you didn't even know that about me. You know why? Because it's in the past. It's not important. That chapter of my life being a good high school basketball player, it's over. You don't see me trying to show you my high school basketball highlights and prove to you that I was good. That is what Tate Martell is still trying to do, and he's older than me. He's 24 years old. It's embarrassing, and I'm not saying this to be hateful. I'm trying to help my man out. Tate Martell, here's my best advice to you. You need to close the chapter on that book. Look, I get it. It's hard to give it up, but eventually, you got to. Because you know what he's turning into? That one uncle at the cookout that's always talking about how good they was in high school. Trust me, you do not want to be that guy because he's the person that everybody laughs and makes fun of. And the worst part about Tay Martell is he didn't even have injury problems that held his career back. He just wasn't good enough. And here's where it gets even more sad. This person said, This one really hit you hard, bro. You haven't stopped posting about it. They got to you. Under that, he replied to it and said marketing. Then under that, somebody said, You ain't did nothing since high school. And he said, Dang right. And I'm still getting paid for social media. I'm not too sure what he's referring to and I'm not exactly sure how he's getting paid from social media. He doesn't make money from YouTube. He doesn't make money from Instagram. He only has 41 posts and Instagram doesn't don't pay a lot anyways, and he doesn't make money from TikTok or any other source like that. Maybe he's running a social media account, I don't know, but I'm not too sure how he's getting money like he says he is, so if you know anything about that, let me know in the comment section and fill us in. The only thing I can assume is either A, he's running a social media company, and I don't think that's happening, or B, he's referring to uh, two to three sponsorships he did on his Instagram. I pray and I hope he's not referring to those sponsorships he did on Instagram because I know they didn't even pay that much. You can say what you want about me and you can hate me till the day I die, but there's one thing you can't say about Matt B. Great. I didn't peak in high school. Say what you want about me, but my life don't revolve around what I did in high school. Yeah, I had fun in high school. Yeah, I had a good athletic career, but I don't talk about it. And here's the part that's even worse. Not only is peaking in high school bad, but still talking about it. That's what's so bad. And I already know somebody's going to try to say, well, Matt, you're talking about it right now. And I'm only using that as an example. You'll probably never hear me talk about it again. Tate Martell, quit posting your high school football highlights. You look stupid. And this is some advice. I'm not being a hater. Last but not least, before we end off this video, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this because we've already talked about it a little, but it's the Ryan Day in the NIL situation. He came out the other day and said that Ohio State's going to need $13 million from local businesses to keep the roster intact. We've already talked about that, but I didn't even really think about it. That means every starter is going to be receiving $500,000. Wouldn't that make sense though, right? If you need $13 million for your roster, the starters would be getting around $500,000. If he needs $13 million for the roster, how do you say, okay, well, my quarterback's going to get $3 million of it, and then the backup punter, he's only going to get $10,000. That's what's kind of confusing to me because it's going to cause tension in the locker rooms, and that's just how life is. I don't know how much tension it's going to cause, but there's going to be some. Let's say I'm the backup offensive tackle, and I'm only getting $30,000 from the name, image, and likeness, and then the starting offensive tackle, he's getting $2 million. As humans, our natural instinct is to be envious of that, right? Life is about competing, and if the guy next to me is making $2 million more than me, I'm going to be upset. I have questions about that. Does he mean his starters need $13 million or the entire team? Are they going to divide it out? And even if you divide it out, it's not going to be paid equally. Wayne Kiffin brought it up and said the quarterback should make more than the offensive tackle because that's how life is. It isn't fair. I wanted to bring that up because I just had questions about it. Let me know your thoughts on anything down below. But, ciao, what up, babies?